Hey, welcome back to The Ready State. Sometimes when we try to take a glimpse of where do I fit all these things together, mobilizing, taking care of my soft tissue, improving my position, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And one of the things we want to try to do is simplify some of our behaviors so you can see how they fit into the context of your busy life. Now, this conversation is about how do I prepare myself in the evening for a better sleep experience, or more importantly, if I'm feeling stressed, how do I come down? How do I relax? How can I sort of get off of this, this freight train of optimization and Red Bull and five hour energy and coffee and go, go, go and answering emails late into the night? And one of the things that we, we know is that our athletes have gotten really good at getting spun up and we are less practiced at spinning down. So the way we think about this sometimes is that sleep is a really great barometer about the behaviors that led up to sleep. So sometimes we kind of think of these things as sort of very disparate experiences. There's all, I get home, there's all the things that happen, and then boom, sleep, and then those are kind of magical things. I get track all my sleep, I understand, but I don't somehow sometimes relate those relationships between what I did before I went to sleep and what actually happened in terms of the latency, how quickly I went to sleep, and how well I stayed asleep. So one of the things that we have come to find in our clinical experience is that if we back-ended some of the soft tissue work, we back-loaded some little bit of mobility work, a little bit of soft tissue work, and integrated that with some, some breathing down regulation techniques, which actually enhanced the soft tissue work, not only did our athletes find that they could fit this into their busy lives and schedules, so it wasn't one more thing they had to do, but also it helped them fall asleep, it helped them relax, and it helped them sleep deeper, which begets sort of improvement in the next day in terms of clarity and how we feel. And what we found is that our experience indicated that we saw a lot better behavior sort of stickiness and so that the behaviors ended up becoming uh, sort of more ingrained. So let me show you what we're talking about. Really, you can be as simple as you want. When I travel on the road, I usually take a ball with me, but in, next to the TV or in our living room, I've got a ton of rollers to which my kids can attest. And what I try to do is just do a little bit of soft tissue work before we go to bed or before we move to the bedroom or when it works in the evening, sort of we kind of done the dishes and down-regulated and shut down. And one of the things that happens is we know that if you can put some of this soft tissue mobilization input into the body, it's one of the ways that you can tell your nervous system to relax. And if you've ever had a massage, you definitely did not get up off the massage table ready to fight someone. And that is not how the system works. The system works on, hey, I get a little massage, I put a little input, and sometimes I feel sleepy which is one of the great things about just blindly doing any soft tissue work for about 10 to 12 minutes. Your mileage may vary. It may be only seven or eight minutes for you, and for me, I need 15 minutes. When I'm super stressed, I will actually lay on the roller on my stomach and go right from my trunk. We call this gut smashing, and even just putting the ball and laying on it or laying on a roller, somehow just putting in some more input into the trunk area, we think, our experience is that it maybe has an even larger impact on having our brain start to turn off, and that may be because of the vagal stimulation, working on that vagus nerve. Maybe just more soft tissue work, and I really have to focus on my breathing. It really doesn't matter. But this is a really great place to overlap sort of what's tight for the day, sort of take inventory, and then the real issue here is work on some big muscle groups. And that can be calves, that can be quads, that can be hips, that can be lower back, it doesn't really matter. But think big muscle group will have a large impact. So I'm trying to chill. If not, it doesn't matter. Work on whatever you need to work on. If I really have to hit the off switch, boom. Do a little bit of gut smashing. Just roll around in your belly, you know, lay on the roller. And here's the key. We can do lots of things. Just the soft tissue work by itself is gonna have a miracle impact. But also one of the things we know is that if you can integrate your breathing to change your breathing patterns to match a more parasympathetic downregulation you know, sort of pattern, we're going to double, get a double sort of uh, bottom line, double bang for the buck. So what we try to do is to say, hey look, whatever you're working on, take a big breath in, get into a comfortable position, four second inhale, contract, nice and easy, just build some tension there, and then long eight second exhale. And if you're familiar with our work, we do this anytime we're trying to make soft tissue change, we're trying to get the brain involved. But we know that, as Iyengar said, the nerves are king of the breath and the breath is king of the brain. So when we're trying to spin up, as you saw in our spin up video, we saw that we took huge big breaths in and then quick exhale. 
So what we're doing when we flip this, when we take a shorter inhale, longer exhale, is we're telling our brains nothing bad is going on here. So it, just as a matter of stress modulation during the day, if you take a big breath and slowly let it out, it's a way of being able to trick your brain into automatically coming off that fight or flight state. So big breath in, contract for four seconds, and lengthen that exhale as long as you can. An eight second exhale is the magic. Lengthening, getting that exhale beyond six seconds, just from our clinical experience and working with our yogis, is the magic. So lengthen your exhale as long as you can, and do that cycle while you're rolling on your body. Big breath in, contract, hold for four seconds, lengthen that exhale as long as you can, and now we've got a great breathing practice on top of soft tissue. And so we can do, I can kick off one of the things I needed to do, is I need to do some downregulation breathing or meditation breathing, or I need to do some soft tissue, right there. And what we find is that this impact 10 to 12 minutes, some soft tissue work, working in the areas, trying to integrate that breathing can be a, a very, very powerful way for you to manage stress, to downregulate when you feel like you need it, work on your soft tissues, work on stiffness, work on things that ache or sore, and more importantly, tell your brain that this is what we do before we go to bed. And as we know that the brain is really a complex and, and phenomenal structure, and it's really good at spotting patterns. So if you start to say, hey, I'm gonna do a little rolling before I go to the bedroom and go to sleep, well, guess what? Your brain is gonna say, I know what comes next. It's the sleep. And it starts to fall into the pattern, starts to fall into the routine, and so we're signaling that it's time to come down, it's time to relax, and we do that by doing consistently the same thing. So not only will you be able to roll, because you've actually got time in the day, but you'll also find that it helps you to sleep better and will help to reinforce the behavior of coming down off of that uh, bulletproof coffee, off of that, uh, that coconut MCT oil burst thing that you've been doing all day long. Hope this helps. Happy sleeping.